What's up YouTube? Jeff back again from SamiGuru.com here and today another exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today we have a new test build that dropped this week for One UI 8.5. As you guys may know if you've been following the channel, been following our website, I have a version of One UI 8.5 here on my phone on the right. This is an international model of the S25 Ultra. Here on the left I have my Galaxy S25 Ultra US model which is running One UI 8 still. Um, the original test build, I did a full video with 30 plus changes from One UI 8 to One UI 8.5. I'll drop that somewhere up here if you guys want to check it out. But today we're going to talk about this new build, what it is, and some of the big changes that I found this week. Now, I apologize for being a little late getting this out. It's been a crazy week for Samsung news. We've been covering tons of stuff. Check out the YouTube channel. It's just packed with content from this week. Also, if you guys haven't yet, make sure you check out the website, semiguru.com. Cover the latest Samsung news, tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews. We have all of our breaking coverage there. You can also get our mystery box program if you're in the U.S. Tap the orange banner at the top, you get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand, 65 watt charger, USB-C wireless earbuds, or wired earbuds rather, and a screen protector in every box. Phone number, email, or both. Again, this is U.S. only, that's why we have that set to U.S. for the phone number. We use our affiliate revenue to fund this, so all you have to do is use our affiliate link to order your new device. We cover the shipping costs, all the items in there, and it also helps us fund our coverage here on YouTube and pay our staff over on the website for the 24-7 Samsung coverage we bring you guys. So check that out. You can also bookmark our website, set us as a preferred source in Google News and Google Discover, so you get all of our great Samsung news here on YouTube and the website right away. We'll take a look at this brand new build. If you look here, there's a brand new check for update screen, which I showed in the previous video as well. But now you have to go to the top here to tap this and you'll see it. Here you see CYJ1 based on Android 16 with the October 1st security patch. So that is the new build that I'm running on this device. Let's get into some of the changes. The biggest one is one that I showed over on X when I first got this build. There's a new pop-up when you install this build that tells you that you can now get summaries for your notifications to turn this on in settings, and I'll show you where it is. Now, this notification summary feature using AI has been rumored for a long time, since back in One UI 7. And it looks like Samsung's finally going to bring it. But keep in mind, it's something that our friend Michelle Ramon at Android Authority pointed out. This is the pop-up from stock Android. This is Google styling and everything. As you guys can see, that is not One UI styling. And that's for a reason. That's because it's the exact same pop-up in language that is in stock Android for the Pixel. And so if you go in here, though, into the settings and you search for notification and summaries right here, use notification summaries, you'll see right there, this is also all Google theming, all Google UI. This is not Samsung. It's not themed or skinned to look like One UI right now. But you can see it also says the messages are never sent to Google. So here, if you turn this on though, right now it doesn't do anything. It just has all the apps turned on by default, and it doesn't really do anything at all uh, if you try to use it. It doesn't provide any summaries. Chances are, if Samsung uses this, they're going to skin the pop-up and also this menu to match One UI and probably put it into Galaxy AI somewhere and just make this match the rest of the overall One UI look and feel. But right now, it's just exactly what's in Android. But my feeling is they're definitely going to use this feature in 8.5, and that's why the pop-up is there right now. Up next, let's talk about new icons. So you guys may have noticed here, comparing my 8.5 phone on the right and the 8.0 phone on the left, we do have brand new icons. And it's kind of subtle, so I'll actually put a little screen grab here just comparing two icons on the screen. If you look at the phone and you look at internet, there's this 3D effect on the icons in One UI 8.5, and that's because Samsung has added this gradient glow to kind of make this you know, internet icon, it looks, kind of looks like the rings of Saturn, I always call it here. Uh, this guy right here, this navigator icon, it stands out from the purple background because of that gradient. So all these stock icons in One UI 8.5 now have this gradient glow effect that give them more of a 3D look versus what we saw with One UI 8. So this is not in every single Samsung icon. I assume it will probably proliferate to some of the other icons like Good Lock and stuff like that eventually. But it is right now in the most important you know, stock icons like phone, gallery, Samsung internet, some of those other ones that come pre-installed, which you can actually see here if you go into the Samsung folder. I know I have smaller icons over here because of the number of icons that I have in my app drawer. But you can definitely see the difference here between these icons. They're definitely giving them more of a 3D look because of that gradient glow. Up next, we can take a look at the phone app. So in the original One UI 8.5 build, the phone app got a redesign where it had this floating menu on the bottom, 
but it didn't go across the entire portion of the screen. Here it now goes all the way across and I think it actually looks really bad in my personal opinion. I really liked how it just had a pill shape that went took up about maybe 40% of the screen, maybe 50% right across the center. But now they've changed this and it doesn't look very good in my personal opinion. Up here you can see here paste number and clipboard. This is now a pop-up. I think I've seen this before on One UI 8 though, so I don't want to say this is new, but I guess it could be. I, I think I've seen this kind of pop-up before. The styling might be slightly new. I just noticed that there in this build. Now you still have this little phone icon here, which is white now with a green phone versus green with the white phone in One UI 8. But this big change is the floating menu going all the way across, which doesn't look great to me. Up next, let's talk about the Galaxy AI menu in the gallery. So if we go to the gallery here, let me pick a photo here as well. Just pick a screenshot because it doesn't really matter. If you go in here to the Galaxy AI menu, you'll now notice that the Galaxy AI menu looks a little bit different. You don't need to scroll or look for anything like that. You've got all of your various options. So if you go into Galaxy AI, if you look in here, you'll now see that all of these are now contained in the same menu. It's much more easy to use. It's much more compact. Whereas here you have to kind of scroll. So you can see generative edit, create, restyle. And so if you tap through these, you can kind of use the various Galaxy Eye options that you have to you. So you can see drawing, generative edit, sketched image has been slightly changed and combined into that create menu. I think it's a nice look though. You get that nice gradient blur as well on the outside. They really added some additional options that enhance the UI and the look and feel of this menu as well. The digital well-being app has been slightly redesigned. Now this is slightly redesigned from the last build. If you compare the build to One UI 8, you're going to notice that there is a significant difference between these. If we go in here and move the Notion icon, you can see here you're managing your screen time well, add the app icon to your home screen for quicker access. But now these buttons are just bigger. They had already been redesigned from One UI 8. You can see there's a substantial difference between One UI 8 and 8.5. But if you look at my video on the pr first test build of 8.5, these buttons were a little bit smaller. Now they're a little bit bitter, bigger, a little bit read more readable. Uh, which is nice to see. The weather app has been redesigned, which we talked about last time, but now they've added a gradient effect at the top and bottom of the weather app here. This has been done in some other stock apps as well, and it looks really nice. Um, they have made subtle other changes elsewhere, but also now when you search, you have a bottom search bar. Um, this has been aligned with what's happening in the settings menu in 8.5. The search bars are always at the bottom now, which is great, I think, because it makes it much more one-handed in terms of its use, and that's the whole goal of One UI, is to have that one-hand operation. So Samsung made that change, which brings it in line with the settings, and this gradient glow, this fade-out effect, just looks really nice in the One UI 8.5 weather app. I think Samsung did a really nice job with that. Samsung has expanded the family sharing menu that I discovered previously in the first One UI 8.5 build. So if you go into connected devices, you'll see the family sharing menu. It's available in various submenus in here as well. So if you go into quick share, you'll find it down here. It's gonna say family device sharing or under allow sharing over internet, which obviously is new, was not on One UI 8. If you tap on this, it now gives you this menu where you can invite family members and send sharing requests here. Send sharing requests does not work. As you can see, it's still a to do, they're working on it makes sense this is an alpha build if you go to invite family members this will take you to your family menu which has existed for a while uh, but it gives you your different family members you can invite them change your payment method see family requests for various things find health and albums as well that are shared i think the whole purpose of this family sh device sharing is to kind of bring together all of those various places where you could share with your family within one ui your galaxy ecosystem uh, to centralize that because there's a lot of things files payments all those things we just talked about, photos, et cetera. You, you want to share health data, location. And so this is going to give you the ability to centralize that. It doesn't work fully yet, but they have added some menus here, as you guys can see. This also shows up other, under a lot of other menus as well. If you go to camera share, for instance, you're also going to find the ability to do family device sharing. So you can turn family device sharing on or off. It would seem, at least primarily, uh, from within each of these menus, camera share, storage share, and then quick share, all these different places where you might want to share with your family. So this is a very interesting feature, should bring family sharing to a centralized hub with One UI 8.5, and it's clear that Samsung continues to work on this, as you guys can see here. You can also see they really changed this menu here, how they simplified this. They don't really give you the full instructions anymore on how to connect, which 
I don't know why they removed that from that sub menu. Oh, uh, there's a brand new screen recorder UI. So if we go in here and we try to record screen on both sides, screen recorder, screen recorder, here's your new screen recorder UI. Uh, you're gonna get the area to record, which is new here. You're gonna get record sound. It's a little bit different layout. Media, media and mic, same options, taps and touches. Nothing crazy there. If we start the recording, you'll see there's a different little countdown with some white text. They've changed this menu. It's got some gradient glow on it as well. If you go to the actual edit though, it's pretty much the same. They've changed the way the arrows look. Nothing really super revolutionary here, but you can definitely see they've made a few changes uh, to this. You can also show yourself on camera if you want within the recording menu for screen recording. There is a brand new lock screen editor UI. So let me go to the lock screen. Uh, this was not uh, something that was unchanged in the first build. They did make some changes, but they've now changed it even more. So now if you go here, you go to lock screen clock, you now have this floating window instead of this one that goes across the whole entire. You've also got this nice gradient blur. This drop here changes the saturation. You can see I showed that in my very first video on 8.5. There are some new clock styles. Um, the adaptive clock, unsurprisingly, still doesn't work fully. So if you set it, you can see like if you move it around, first of all, I, you can see I have this animal, it's supposed to work, but if you hit done, it actually, it adapts, but it won't, it won't adapt as you drag it. So it's very strange. Also, if you double tap, you've now got this fade in effect, double tap to wake, kind of like the pixel, which is kind of cool. You can see here on One UI 8, you don't really have that aggressive of a fade in effect. You can see that one doesn't really fade in the same way. Let me see if I can get them both off. Let me see. There we go. So you can kind of see the difference there. Definitely a more subtle fade in that Samsung has added with this new One UI 8.5 build. Very, very buggy build, by the way. Um, if you have the opportunity to install this, I wouldn't. Back gestures don't work in certain places. The always on display messes up your clock. There's a lot of bugs in this build. Up next, the new software install menu UI. So this one I'll have to show you guys inside my gallery here because this one is one that was actually when I was installing it. You'll see right here, this is the brand new install. So you schedule restart, restart now. Once you actually install a build, just like they redesigned the software update menu when you check for updates, this has also been redesigned with this green and blue kind of color gradient, which I think looks really nice. They do have some new animations here in the quick panel. So if you go to smart things over here, smart things over here, you see how it slides in. It's a little bit different animation in the quick panel. Same thing for a couple other ones. Like if you're doing modes, you see over here, if I hold down modes, it just kind of comes out that way here with modes, it pops up in line. So they've changed the way a few of these animation work. I also showed you guys this one last time. If you have a vertical slider, these sliders kind of animate and flip up into horizontal when you go into the menu. So they've kept that the same. They really need to work on the fluidity of that animation. Still not super fluid, um, but they did make a few changes to things with inside the quick panel as well. Privacy protection. This is something that I covered in a previous video on the channel. Privacy protection is going to bring the privacy display feature to the Galaxy S26 Ultra that'll shield your screen from people. Uh, it might also use some hardware stuff, but right now it's just a software implementation. Uh, you can actually use this in One UI 8 or One UI 7, uh, One UI 8 or One UI 8.5, definitely not One UI 7. If you go to the share menu, once you install privacy protection, you'll see it right here. And if you tap on it, this will let you obscure any text that you want. So you can just tap on text and obscure it. Like if you want to obscure the build number, whatever. Um, this is also going to introduce that privacy display feature that I just mentioned coming up with the S26 Ultra. Whether or not they're going to limit that to the S26 Ultra, I don't know. Technically, they could bring it to some previous devices, but they also may try to save that as a selling point for the new series, of course. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon. Definitely check out the Mystery Box program, bookmark the website, follow us on Google News for more great coverage. There's probably a few other changes in here, so if you want to follow me and the website on X, I constantly tweet out changes as I find them because there's little things here and there that pop up and I don't want to make a full video. But this is kind of all the big changes I found so far in this build, and there's quite a few of them. Oh, one other change, actually, before we go. Our good friend, Michelle Ramon, I, I didn't really plan to include this in the video, but our good friend, Michelle Ramon at Android Authority, we gave him the build information from this firmware, build prop information, and he discovered that this build is based on Android 16 QPR2 instead of the base Android 16 version, 
which means Samsung is going to be able to build in a lot of those Android 16 QPR2 features into One UI 8.5, which gives a lot of credence to the fact that notification summaries will indeed make their way to the final build, just probably scanned using One UI design language. So great article there to check that out. We wrote up Michelle's findings over at Android Authority. Huge shout out to him for working with us on that and uh, getting that analyzed and confirming. Anyway, appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.